How do you do, ladies and gentlemen, and boys and girls, and mothers and fathers, and everybody? I'm Julia Sumner Miller, and physics is my business. And today, a strange kind of physics for an old man, an old physicist. The physics of toys. I don't suppose there, are, there is another physicist in all of history, dead or alive, who has played with them so abundantly as I, for the purpose of understanding why it is that it works. I am reminded that the great James Clark Maxwell, when a little boy, was given to the phrase, what's the go of it? Meaning, in my phrase, why is it so? Why does it do what it does? Or as Kepler used to say, why things are as they are and not otherwise. So I'm going to entertain us with some explorations into the physics of toys. I have characterized toys as mechanical toys, acoustic toys, thermal toys, magnetic toys, electrostatic toys, electric toys. I don't have any nuclear toys, but maybe in due course. So let's look at some at random. It does not matter what the order, but here is a mechanical toy which is very enchanting. I have here a little dog, which you recognize as Pluto. His legs are free in the plane of his long front to rear axis. And I have a string attached to his nose, and to the end of the string, some weights, paper clips. Now I put him on the table with the string hanging over and the paper weights, ha weights hanging freely. <clears throat> and I'm going to put him into motion. Watch now. There he goes. Now I'm going to stop him because there is something to say. Does not reason suggest that when he gets to the end of the table, he should fall off, be pulled over. That is what reason suggests. But I'm going to show you this is not what a physicist expects, nor indeed is this what will happen. Watch it now. Watch it. Oh, oh, notice a little too much friction there. I'll start him again. Watch him. No, he didn't fall over. And now I'm going to remark about the physics. Here in the horizontal, the pull was horizontal. So a horizontal pull can produce horizontal motion. Now when he gets to the very edge, I hope you see that the pull is vertical. And a vertical pull has, as we say in physics, no component in the horizontal, so he cannot move further. Indeed, here is a pair of uh, firemen, identically equipped, and watch. One would think that they would fall over. No, they didn't fall over. And I am reminded, doing a program on the physics of toys in Oslo, Norway, I decided to have a wager with the professor who was playing the game with me, and so we will race these two. Watch it. Watch it. Oh, Disney would be delighted that his Pluto won the race. There we are. So, what am I led here to say, here and now? The competence of children is shamefully underrated. I could teach the physics of this to four-year-olds, indeed two-and-a-half-year-olds. I gave a lecture to about a hundred pre-kindergarten, kindergarten children in Australia last year. Very exciting they were. All right, next demonstration. Next demonstration. I have a little toy car with its smokestack and wheels, and I'm going to turn a screw thing here. What am I doing? I am winding up a spring. I am storing some elastic energy in a wound up spring. Then when I release the spring, the spring unwinds, turns a fan, blows a stream of air out of this uh, smokestack. Watch it. Now, now I'm going to show you something very dramatic. Why does the ball stay there? Well, everybody says, Professor, there's nothing to that. The stream of air coming out of that stack is vertically up. The air pushes up, the ball pushes down. When they are equal, the ball stays there. And that would be right. But now, supposing I turn that smokestack off the vertical, 
and the ball still stays there. Aha, uh -huh, we got a new piece of business, and that ain't so easy to understand. Somebody says, oh, Professor, that ain't so easy, that's good, not good English. Well, I take liberty and license with the language. Notice, liberty and license with the language. That's very good alliteration. Watch this now. Watch it. And the ball is spinning. And the ball is spinning. Of course, too much off the vertical fall down. And I want to know why it does that. Oh, this would take me about an hour of blackboard mathematics to show you why. But let me say this. Why the ball stays there in this position, spinning in a very interesting way, which you witnessed, is quite uh, answers the, or lies in the same category as the following. Why I can throw a baseball in a curve, why an airplane can fly, why a smokestack has a good draft, why a bird can soar in the air, why a flag can flutter, and a thousand such things. So you see the physics in this toy car is not trivial.